Welcome to the deep dive. Today we're carrying into the sources covering uh, what is really the operational backbone of the conflict in Ukraine, mm -hmm. the M142 Hamars and its tracked cousin, the M270. Right. And, you know, while drones get all the headlines, our research makes a really strong case that HIMARS is, well, arguably the single most strategically impactful system that was sent to Kyiv. Oh, it's not just impactful. I'd say it fundamentally reshaped the geography of the war. How so? Well, what's fascinating is just the immediate consequence of its introduction. I mean, HIMARS gave them the reach. The reach, right. The yeah. reach that just instantly forced Russia to move its entire logistical network. We're talking ammo depots, command posts, everything. All of it. All of it. Back a, a staggering 80 kilometers. And that shift, you know, just forcing that deep retreat, it degraded their logistics so thoroughly, it probably saved Kiev and Kharkiv. That's the definition of strategic disruption. Yeah. And the tech behind it has some, well... Some really clever aspects. I keep coming back to the M30A1, the alternative warhead. Yeah. What makes that round so ingenious? It's the uh, it's the clean kill it delivers. Yeah. That warhead is designed to just scatter 182,000 preformed tungsten fragments. So it's like a giant shotgun blast. A terrifyingly effective giant shotgun blast. Yeah. It's perfect for, say, massed infantry or any soft-skinned vehicles out in the open. And the critical difference here compared to older cluster munitions is the safety factor, isn't it? Exactly. That's the genius of it. You get this massive destructive area, but it's all kinetic energy. It avoids a conventional explosive payload. Which means no duds. No unexploded ordnance, no UXO. That means way less long-term risk for civilians, and you get a much cleaner battlefield. It's a huge deal. So high effectiveness, none of the long-term liability. Okay, so if the rockets are that good, why did Russian air defenses have such a hard time with them? It really comes down to a perfect storm of technical challenges for any defender, really. The GMLRS rounds, they have a tiny radar cross-section, so they're hard to even see. But even if you do detect one, it's combining high speed with a complex flight path. It can pull high G maneuvers at the end. Too fast and too agile for their interceptors. Yeah, systems like the S-300, they just can't keep up. It's too much for their guidance systems to handle reliably. Which creates this devastating strategic asymmetry. Absolutely. Russia is burning through their most expensive interceptors, S-300s, S-400s. Their best stuff. And often failing, trying to hit these relatively cheap wool, mass-produced GMLRS rockets. It's a losing game, and it drains their strategic inventory fast. But, as our sources point out, this isn't some magic bullet. Western tech isn't invincible, and we saw that pretty clearly with the uh, GLSDB system. That was a crucial lesson, yeah. The ground-launched small-diameter bomb... It really underperformed. Why? Unlike the ballistic arc of a GMLRS rocket, GLSDB is a glider. It has this long glide phase after its launch. Making it vulnerable. Far more vulnerable to electronic warfare, to EW. It depends heavily on GPS during that long flight, which gives Russian jammers plenty of time to disrupt the signal. And then there's the other big disappointment. The massive what-if around ETAS-CMS. Yes, the failure to deliver the right ATAS-CMS variant that was a genuinely missed strategic inflection point. What do you mean by the right one? Ukraine only received the cluster version. It's great for area targets, but it's not what you need to take down massive hardened infrastructure. Like the Kerch Strait Bridge. Specifically the Kerch Bridge. They needed the unitary warhead for that job. If that had been available and used in 2023, the whole southern front could look dramatically different today. So where does that leave us? I mean, despite ammunition shortages jamming all these challenges, Himars still feels like the king on the battlefield. It still holds that title, absolutely, because of its enduring utility. But the vulnerability of systems like GLSDB is a stark warning for the future. And that really raises an important question for you, the listener, to think about. Given how successful electronic jamming has been against these GPS-dependent systems, what critical investments have to be made right now to ensure that Western precision weaponry can adapt and remain effective against these evolving EW threats? That is the challenge that's going to define modern warfare.